Thank you for the invitation, uh, Angus, to be here. It's a great opportunity for me to see how you as fruit growers here in, uh, in Australia uh, are fruit growing and um, I uh, was lucky to go with the two guys uh, yesterday to go out and so my first impression uh, uh, I had here was very well um, but I think it's completely different from what we are doing in Europe and the ones who were going uh, last year with Angus on the excursion to uh, Europe, I think they will uh, see uh, or saw last year uh, what we are doing and I think it's a, it's a translation uh, of many, many years. Uh, when I came from school, let's say that's about uh, more than 20 years ago, we still, what uh, Marcel said, we still were in that old fashioned way of thinking and learning, yeah, well, uh, and especially about uh, rootstock, but I came later on that. But the, I saw the translation from the big trees already, uh, let's say 30 years ago, 40 years ago, till what we are doing now. Okay. Um, I will introduce myself. I'm Anton Jongerius and I'm working as a freelance consulting for Fruit Consult. And uh, Fruit Consult is a private consulting organization in Europe, consulting in apples, pears, cherries, and plums. We are with 10 consultants, uh, seven are in the field three uh, of a, a crop protection, uh, protection and the main areas are uh, Holland and Belgium and in <coughs> Europe, uh, Germany, Italy, Poland, Turkey and England. In the PPO, the commercial uh, experimental st uh, station in uh, Holland, uh, 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 Fruit Consult is uh, raising the management in uh, Randwijk as in the research station. The research station is property of the Wageningen University and uh, Fruit Consult is working together with uh, in PPO organization um, that is plant production and surrounding that go with Wageningen University with the Dutch fruit growers organization and a cooperative fruit consulting organization. Well, let, I will tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm nearly going to the 70s, but I'm uh, still loving doing this work. Uh, till uh, about uh, 2002, 2003, I had my own orchard with uh, alone pears. Uh, in the beginning, it was 60% pears and 40% apples. I changed it in the years of uh, half 80s and in that time in the end 80s we start with the high density plantings of pears. Um, when I sold that in 2002 um, I had a little bit left and uh, in 2010 my son bought the other part what was left and I uh, went further with the consulting, but, uh, uh, especially uh, with my activities, activities are a pair study club from Fruit Consult and I'm doing uh, in Europe and Argentina and South Korea the consulting for Sweet Sensation, a new pear variety. Then uh, a little bit about the pears in Belgium and Holland. Uh, there are around 15,000 hectares of pears in Holland and Belgium. Then the varieties we uh, raise in Holland and Belgium is for 80-90%, more 90% I think, conference, uh, a few percent of commis, Beret, Alexander Lucas, Durando and a little bit other varieties and that we don't have any condo, no abate, that's a real 
Italian variety, Peckhams and Williams, we don't have them. They raised that too in Italy and a little bit in the southern of France. New varieties, uh, what is coming in the last years is the Sweet Sensation, Xenia, uh, and, and the Migo. The Sweet Sensation is an, uh, an, uh, a commis, what uh, the red, it's a red commis what was found in a tree, let's say 25 years ago. Uh, what's the name for that? Spore. A spore. A spore. A spore, yeah. In, in a commis. And by that way they developed it. Xenia is um, a pear coming from Poland, and Migo is a new crossing. Uh, it looks like a little bit on conference. Oh, the other. Um, the new varieties are also in, uh, in the PPO. Yeah, you see here the Migo. Uh, the, and other new varieties is Griffin Gepa. And it's a red variety too. And Selina. Look good at the color of the pears. Yeah, that's very important. I don't know what. Uh, people in, in, in Australia are like, but um, what we said in Europe, Selina is a very good pear, very tasting well, but the color is a, too, a little too purple. Um, we, we actually saw that over in Belgium, we actually thought it was quite good. It had a nice red color. So we didn't see yeah. the red, the purpley sort of yeah. color. So we actually thought that was our better one it's one of it. so we go to the planting systems and I think that's a, a very important thing for you when you will want to renew plantings uh, or planting uh, a new systems and uh, the first planting system uh, is the traditional spindle the distance is 325 by 125. You are planting about 2,500 trees with a table, uh, and the table you're making on the uh, the, uh, the feathers, what are on the, about, let's say, 80, 90 centimeters with wires. Then it's very important for pairs that the feathers are in 45 degrees, eh? uh, 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 up this way. So uh, your table has to be above the, the, the implant of the, uh, the branches. I will come later on uh, back why. Uh, the trunk is slender with young fruit wood. Normally we plant always two year old trees from the nursery sometimes three, but I think that when you plant anyway, in what system you plant pears, always plant two-year-old trees. Uh, before I go to the other things, uh, uh, going to two-year-old trees, why are we planting two-year-old trees in whatever what system? <coughs> You have to plant a tree that is ready to produce as fruit ground. You have to order at the nursery your tree what you want. Yeah? As fruit grower, you're not a nursery man. You're, it's not necessarily that you have to build a tree. You have to buy a tree that is ready to produce. That's important as fruit ground for whatever what system? Here you see uh, this type of tree with the table, and you see also the 45 degrees of the of the branches. There's another example. You can do it with wood. You can do it also with iron. Or there are so many. Uh, materials that you can get. 
This is the type of tree we want to plant for this system. When you buy a tree for this system, it has to be on this particular uh, number of branches. Then you have a tree that is ready to produce. Then you go, you go to uh, the V system, and that's 325 by one meter. Let's say in Europe it's the most common uh, distance, it's always 3 till 3, 25 uh, uh, of the rows. That's, that's normal. Uh, you plant then about 3,000 trees, four dominant leaders, 50 centimeters from each. So you have space enough to prune, to pick, without any problems. You have 12,000 liters per hectare, and in the first years, we stable for an extra production. Yeah, so, uh, let's see, oh, we can see it here. On here, here in the middle, you have a wire, but here on the left and on the right side, you make an, an extra wire where you put on your uh, branches. Not too long, but that gives you an extra production very soon, already in the second leaf. And again, always <coughs> planting two-year-old trees. Here you see the top and four equal feathers to go in one time uh, uh, to the top. A big production. Then we go to the mini spindle tree and you plant that on three meter, 80 centimeter or one meter, depends on always the growth, the, head, the, the quality of the growth. You plant about 3,300 to 4,000 trees per hectare and the same as a traditional spindle, however, more slender. Here you see it. It's a perfect system. Here you see the quality of the trees. And, uh, well, I see you over there, cost a lot of money. <laughs> Let me tell you this. This type of tree, two year old, doesn't matter what, we pay the nurseryman for that type of tree four and a half euros <coughs> per tree. So that would be around six and a half six dollars? And a half dollars. No more. When you have less quality, you pay less. Uh, Anton, can you say that about, um, you get also, when you plant a three-year-old tree, people always said become a problem, but when you plant a two-year-old tree, you get a sort of shock and it cuts them up, basically. Would you agree with that or is that? No. Uh, you, you plant a two-year-old tree, uh, I think it's the same as a one-year-old, it, it has to start again. And it doesn't matter if it has much roots or less roots. Uh, in the experimental station, we did a lot of exp experiments with that. When you cut off all the big roots or uh, lots of roots, doesn't matter. It has to start again. What is very important is uh, when you plant a tree and uh, it, it, it has to recover in, in the first year, and to make flower buds in the next year is good conditions for planting. Uh, but I came later on on that. On, on the, but another thing is, uh, before I forgot to tell you, you see here there are a lot of feathers. Yeah? In the year of planting, we don't cut the trees. We do nothing. The only thing is important that you're tying it here, here, and here in the top, so they cannot move by the wind. That's important for regrowth. 
all the feathers what you see here in this system eh? uh, 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 when you go to super spindle it's a little bit different but in this system and in the normal traditional uh, 325 and 125 you don't cut nothing on the tree because the more leaves you have the better is the recovering of the tree leaves are food for the tree yeah. so and of course it's very important that you have your drip irrigation or your sprinklers yeah. make sure that in the first year that is no day that that is uh, uh, too short of water and you have to spoil them in the in the first year uh, I, and uh, of course when you talking about uh, root stocks this system is uh, you can only plant with Quincy Adams or Quay Aline another thing is that we don't know anything else in Europe so far the last 20 years I cannot find an orchard where we still plant quince A or R strong forget that and don't tell me that it's not possible uh, when I, what I was telling you uh, earlier I was raised with quince A and in that time we moved to the sea forget everything what is stronger than uh, uh, maybe in, in circumstances quince A but I say no, no quince A quince C, Adams is a very good one and quince A uh, here you see a picture of the super spindle then the double leader system cost you half of the trees from a V system uh, 3000 trees a trunk with two leaders in the first year with the table for extra production of course and normally a two year old tree the same type of uh, tree you buy from from the nursery because uh, uh, oh yeah yeah Uh, for a, a double leader, you need two the same uh, uh, feathers to go up, and the other you use for production. The, one of the things is what we, let's say this, a double leader, you take these two as going up, then this one, you leave that of course in the first year, you don't do nothing. In the second year, you tie them on your table. <coughs> That's important. And when they are too strong, and uh, when, when, when this is, uh, how do you say that, Marcel, and, and the concurrent? The competition. Yeah. You yeah, but. Competition. Uh, uh, this one is, is okay, have the implanting. But when it's too strong, let's say this, we break it in spring. And, or you can do it in, in fall too because you don't have the European canker. Uh, but we in Europe can do that in fall because uh, of the European canker. But when you uh, break it, it will produce in the next year. So this is the double leader, and here you see, eh, here's one, here's one, and here on the underside, on the table, you have your extra production for the first years. Then the benefits and difficulties of the different kind of uh, things that we talked about. So here you see the spindle. The plus of a spindle is low investment cost, grow regulation, but minus is the production in the first years. And you have to build more. Pruning with 
unschooled labor is more difficult because you have to build that tree and you have to know some knowledge to build a tree. And labor is expensive, not only here, also in Europe. The V system is easy working when it's, when it's ready, it's very, very easy. You have more light, in Europe is important, here you have plenty of light. The growth regulation is very easy. Production in the first years is less. <coughs> Hand thinning, you have always come on the inside. Same is for picking. And quality planting trees is critical because, and then I come again uh, back to uh, what tree you get or you buy from the nursery. That's important. A very good V system tree uh, you have to order. And then the super spindle, it's a high and an early production, already in the second leaf. It's easy working because the pruning is very easy. Growth regulation can be a minus. High investment, it's a real high investment. Uh, a, a light uh, reception in the bottom part for here, no problem, in Europe it is and a big chance to make mistakes but what I have learned in the past is that whatever you make on a new plantation doesn't matter if you like the spindle, the V system or the super spindle when you make an investment, make an investment what is so big that you have to do it 100%. When you don't do it 100%, it costs you a fortune. Don't forget that. There is a must to do when you make a big investment. It doesn't matter what system. But do it. That's the only way to do it 100%. Otherwise, it costs you a fortune. Uh, Maybe you stand well, he is maybe a little uh, thinking too, too, too much in production, what about super spindle? Uh, let me tell you this, I've seen several uh, uh, super spindle orchards where you buy a tree of two meters with seven, eight feathers, two year old. Eh? always two year old, so you have seven, eight feathers. You plant it in spring, during the whole year, you spoil it with water, with fertilizers, with leaf uh, 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 fertilizing, have full year spray, everything you do. And in the next year, and really believe me, that I can show you plenty of that uh, good production trees, in the next year you have around 6 kilo per tree, by 9,000 trees, 60 tons in the second leaf. But again, when you do an investment like that, do a big investment, then you have to do it okay, with sprinklers and of course with fertigation. Uh, oh, uh, another thing for the V-system. The V system is uh, a very, very good working system. For light is here no problem, but uh, when you have wind, and uh, now it's winter, so I don't know, but I hear from you and from Angus, you have much wind in, during the season. Uh, when you have a V system, then you have the highest pack out, because there's much less wind damage in that V system. That's that's a very that's a good very good for. <coughs> well, the last ten years uh, there were planted around 2,000 in in intensive systems were planted, and all the systems are good. However, the system have to suit to the type of growth. Yes? Uh, uh, I let you I show you three types and you can take of other types, but 
when I told you to plant a V system and you don't believe in it, you say, no, I want to have a super spindle, yeah? plant your V system and don't do what other think for you is better. You have to believe in your own system, doesn't matter what. Then it will succeed, otherwise forget it. And of course the quality of the planting trees is even more important. Then the development in pear rootstocks, Marcel talked already about it. Uh, the current situation is uh, traditionally, let's say the last 50 years, it's Quince C. Uh, exceptional for Belgium. Belgium, uh, they don't have so much water like we have in Holland. Um, other circumstances and water supply is very important. So in Belgium they are going more to Quince Adams. In Holland is uh, uh, the Quince C the most planted, it's the weakest rootstock and Quince Adams is a bit stronger. But when it's going into production there's no negative uh, effect anymore. And especially if when you have soils who are not so powerful, always plant um, uh, a Quince Adams above Quince C. However, when you plant them both, and uh, uh, you see in the first year, the second leaf, there's no difference. Only in production, uh, maybe Quince C is a little earlier than Quince Adams, but we have not much different. We have Adams. Sorry. Anton, um, I'm told that Quince Lee is compared to Quince C. No, I talked to it. Ah. <laughs> but, but we don't have Adams in Australia. No, no, no not, not in commercial production. Uh, the, the current advice is Quince C, okay, but everything is perfect. Soil quality, soil conditions, available of water supply. Prince Adams is always good, eh? uh, especially on replanted soil, less quality soil. Eh? Uh, what, what is less quality soil? But uh, not bad, bad soil. And uh, low availability of water because it's a, li a little bit stronger. Uh, then the introduction of Quaily, it's a new pear rootstock. From Fleuren. Uh, it's introduced in 2000 2010. They made it virus free, and um, the goal is to go for two and a half, three million rootstocks per year. And it's introduced in 2013. And what you see on the nurseries in Holland and Belgium now, I think 60% of the pairs are uh, made on Quince Elite. <coughs> What is the benefit of uh, uh, Quince Aileen? Uh, we have some trials in Randwijk uh, on the experimental station. The first thing was in 2012 we had in Western Europe a an, an very smooth winter. December, January were no frost, a lot of rain uh, and then in the first week of February temperature went down in two days from plus 10 till minus 25. In Belgium they got at that same time a lot of snow, in Holland we didn't. And where uh, the snow was in Belgium there was no damage on the rootstock, there was some damage on the trees. But in Holland uh, I think that high, at least 40% of all young trees who didn't were uh, uh, covered with champost or soil eh? because it's not nearly the temperature what dies, what makes the tree going there, but it's the wind. 60% uh, of all young trees were died, except for the Quaelin. The Quaelin is very resistant against winter frost. That's one thing. And uh, this is about the covering. Yeah? And uh, 
let, let me show you first this. On the left you see the brown uh, cover uh, when you when you cut on the on the interest on the on the root sock. Uh, oh, oh, oh. When you could cut on the on the root sock, it's brown, and in some cases it was really black. Here you see the Quince Eileen, it's completely green, white. No problem. That's a, a big benefit of Quince Eileen for that thing. But here you don't have so much frost in winter. No, no interesting. So either all your variety is compatible with the root with Quince are they? All varieties compatible with Adam? The seed? The seed? Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, the, I don't know the varieties here, but in Europe we have uh, problems with Xenia. That's not uh, compatible. Uh, and then we using the Interstem uh, <coughs> the but I don't know for, uh, for, the, for the varieties you have here. I have well, no idea, but I haven't heard anyway. Everything that is interesting on Queen C that we can't be dealing with. Sorry? All the varieties we're dealing with here at the moment are all need interesting in this beauty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Queen C or, or Queen C, Queen C. Uh, Queen C, I've never heard of incompatibility with Queen C. Is that right, mate? Queen C? Uh, Maybe your varieties here, but. Like, you know, Packams or, or a um, Corella. Well, 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 we go here. You see uh, also uh, something about frost resistant. Huh? Here it's not covered. The shampost during that time. And you see it's black, yeah, dark black, light brown, and here it's covered. So it's all white or, or green. Then uh, the production about uh, the <coughs> several rootstocks, and then you see here there's not much difference. Yeah, quite Quince Adams, Eileen, and Quince C in five years. Is that tons per acre? Kilos per tree in total. This is also a trial, and that's the, the weight of the fruit. A piece. <coughs> so you see there's also not much difference. Then, what is the difference between Quince Eileen and Quince C? And we're talking about here of conference. And conference, this is a normal conference. Green with a little bit brown, not rusty. Yeah? It, it's smooth. When you go over with your finger, it has to be smooth. That is a good conference. When you compare this head Quince A, Adams, C to Quince Eileen, well, you see it yourself, you, you're getting a completely different type of product. And that can be very well for one product, yeah? but for the other, like for conference, the whole world where we export conference, they are used to that type of conference. However, what do they think of that? We don't know. Anyway, there's one thing. You cannot store them together in one store. You always have to store them separate. Because when you put that together with this one, this one, uh, when it comes out of the store, yeah, well, in Europe we pick in September, and we store them till August. Especially on the end, uh, the quality of the stamp and the top of the pear, it's uh, not hard enough anymore. And 
sometimes al, uh, already earlier. Yeah. So that's, it's a completely different pair. Here you see it also. Yeah. Uh, this is Prince Eileen. This is Nana, no friends. The skin cold. Another thing is when you graded that type of pair over the machine, in the water. Yeah, of course, you do the same here. Yeah, it's all running through the water. But then still, you get a lot of damage because of the skin quality. Anyway, it's, it's used that you know what the difference is between the Quince Adams, Quince C, and Quince A. Um, Since 2009, there are trails with Queen Eileen and conference, on conference. And since 2015, we have trials also on other varieties. Eh? Bray, Alexander Lucas, Senia, Mingo, and Sweet Sensation. Maybe for varieties as a commis and Sweet Sensation, very smooth pairs, it will be very profitable. Eh? Uh, so far, the first uh, Sweet Sensation on uh, Quince Eileen will give the, this year the first production. So, on the end of the year, we now, if it's better, say, uh, uh, I can, can tell you that's on, not on this moment. Uh, on the future, Quince Eileen is very interesting new rootstock. Don't forget that. In Dutch nursery, 70% is now uh, 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 Quince And keep in mind, on conference, it's another type of conference, I suppose I told you. Plenty of time. Uh, what I heard yesterday, it's this not an issue for you. Because your temperature of the soil is here always in winter time uh, above 12, 13 degrees. But in, in Western Europe, it's, it's a big issue because temperature can be down in winter time because of the rain and, and, and coldness. We don't have a, a hard winter, but because of mostly of uh, most rainfall, uh, so that to get back, get back till seven, eight degrees. And then when you plant in spring, anyway, before the longest day, it's better than to plant in winter time. You have, uh, when the temperature of the soil is cold, uh, then you have more problems with blind food and then uh, and more regrowth because later on hey, it, they stopped and later on they start again. And when you uh, start uh, with the temperature of the soil above 12, 13 degrees, it's better. What we do always when trees are coming out of the cool store always put them two days in the water because when trees are a month or two months or three months doesn't matter in the cold store they drying out so we always put them 48 hours at least in in the water uh, that they uh, uh, that uh, myself uh, that's a full water. Really, really dry. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Planting in potting soil is uh, especially replanting. We do always in potting soil, always. Not in fresh soil, it's not necessary, but otherwise always in potting soil. You plant them, the, the fresh soil over it, and then with the machine you put it over it very quickly. Then to cover, uh, it's always very good uh, for moisture. Pear, pears are always using 100% more water than apples. Don't forget that. Not only in that time, but it's in the whole year. And of course, uh, we, we do it with mushroom, uh, uh, the, the whole moisture management, and of course fertilization.
Good tying. A tree has to be good tight, otherwise when it's moving by the wind, it doesn't grow. When you have planted a tree and then in the second leaf, when you do everything good, you have a lot of end buds on your spurs and that's your first production and very important is in the first leaf that you spoil it eh? with water with foliar spraying with everything fertilizing then that's the way to get a good production in the second leaf here you see a production in the second leaf Maybe it's too much, huh? but uh, when you have a good tree and, uh, and let's say in, 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 in the normal traditional way, uh, in the second leaf, six, seven kilos is no problem. You have to state also that flower bud straight on the trunk. <coughs> straight on the, on the, on the branches, uh, will not give good fruit set. When you see this, they are mostly when the buds are on the, on the trunk, on the, on the uh, branches, they don't have any leaves. And a green flowering is always a good setting. So very important is that you have leaves under, under the flowers. Yeah, that's very important for good fruit set and for less drop. What you see and where we're working to is that you have your, uh, your buds on the feet, like here, like here. That's always a better flower bud. You have always leaves on it. That's much better. And when you have a lot of leaves on it, it's a better set. And, uh, and of course, when no leaves, you have uh, uh, more drop. Another thing is what I want to give you, maybe you're doing it, uh, I don't know. Uh, when trees are developing in, in spring, and you see that the leaves uh, are not coming, Hey, you have uh, 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 lots of flowers, but no leaves under it. Do you spray with GA47 in that time? Yes, no, not really, not to count. <coughs> only on, uh, huh? You can only do that on uh, some pear varieties. Yeah. But the most pear varieties are very susceptible, and they get misshapen. Okay. So we can't use it, basically. Yeah, but not for fruit set. No, it's fruit. already just when, when the buds are coming out, and you have the very short leaves. No, no, we don't do that. And when you when you spray then uh, 0.25 GA47, yeah. just to develop the leaves, then you get a better fruit set. Yeah. That's how we got probably more leaves than flowers in general. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that you don't need it. <laughs> we are struggling to get flowers on the trees. Then something about pruning. Uh, light is a big amount in trees. And it's also very important that you pick your fruit inside, inside the tree. And uh, the light is here, not, not a big amount, uh, but in, in Western Europe we don't have so much. So we need always to create an open tree to get uh, a good quality, uh, the best quality. And that is young wood. Uh, of course, older wood gives pairs, but the quality is always not, not that well. Anyway, for conference, we want to have a long pair. And when you raise it on uh, two, three-year-old wood, you get a long pair. When you raise it on short, older trees, older wood, you always get a short, thick pair. And they don't like that. Every system we need young wood, for high production and good quality. 
Now, we talked yesterday about it uh, uh, in several places, and I think this is nothing new for you. Uh, it's very important. Young, young wood gives a good quality. Old wood gives a negative, a vegetative growth, and uh, always a bad production. You see in, in, in trees like this, here cannot come any light enough to give good production here also, uh, uh, and, and that's here the same. That cannot grow any good light, any good production. And we talked it yesterday also, uh, Marcel, and uh, yeah. uh, that's that's the same. I think there's no difference in the, in yeah, the We will come back to this in the pruning demonstration oh, yeah. on yeah. this. Yeah. Here you see the same, too much. Vital wood, then you get... Sorry. Go back one. Um, I'm just wondering, Anton, the sort of link between good pollination and good quality pears? Yeah, of course. But yeah. I come to pollination yet a okay. little bit, but pollination is so, so important. And you see that uh, growers are, because of easy working, easy labor, uh, planting whole blocks of five, six, ten hectares of one variety. It goes well, sometimes it goes not, not well. But when it doesn't uh, go well, it costs you a fortune. That's one thing. But when you have a good pollination, you have better quality. You have a thicker pad, the quality of the pad is better, less rusty. Yeah, so uh, what, what, what we think, uh, not only for, for conference, but I think it's for every variety um, very important to have at least 10%. <coughs> when you go to the new varieties, I think it's better to go to 15% of pollinators. And you see the difference every year, better quality, and uh, especially, thank you, and, and uh, especially uh, for the colored uh, uh, varieties, it's, it's a better color, so also a better quality. Here you see also the quality for the pair, a long pair, yeah, a long conference, that gives the money. And here you see the short pair, it's thicker, yeah, especially when you see their pairs here, yeah, that's short and less weight, of course, per, per pair. Remove all the old branches from the top and the bottom part, eh? the tabletop. Important rule, especially in, in young trees, also in older, but it's always a little bit of giving then. But when you start with a new plantation, when you have the trunk and the branches, uh, every branch was this, it's thicker than half of the stem, you have to remove it. That gives so much wrong uh, growth, uh, too thick, too much growth in the top, so remove it. That's, that's a rule, always two to one. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore. That's Angus. Come on, take out Angus. Give it back. Maybe it's a break or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, prune always on stumps, because when you prune on a stump, and then we don't talk about 
the, 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 the old pairs yeah, with the rootstocks, what you have here. But we're talking about Prince C, Queen Aline, Prince Adams. Always prune on stumps because then you get better regrowth. And when you cut it all off, you get no, no regrowth or wrong regrowth, but always on the stump, that's much better. And shoot, of course, when it's possible with end, with end buds. When you have a shoot with the end bud, it will produce right away in the next year. And it gives also a very good quality on end buds. And you see, of course, what we were talking about, uh, the leaves under the, uh, under the flowers give more fruit scent. And then you can produce pears like this way, then you have a good product and you have good quality. And here you see also the, the way of pruning light and let's see the next now we go back uh, when we prune in two year old wood we do it this way in earlier times we cut here so that's easy no thinking you cut through the the, the buds and next year you have to remove it but what we're doing already for many years you cut here and there, and there, just on a stump of a few millimeter in sleeping woods. And when you do that, you can use that branch for three, four years. This is a bed, a, a, a never back, a cut back in a flower bud. <coughs> Gives heavy fruit set, however, this is the problem for the next year. You have a lot of fruit, but you have to remove it, no buds. When you do this, and you have here a few, yeah, here's a bud, but it's not necessary, you can do it also here. Uh, you get the same uh, production, but you can use that branch for three, four years. You see, here, eh, that was a, a two year old branch. You cut it here. I, Here you cut it on, on, the, on the click and you get, ah, my fingers are too big. Uh, no. yeah. Here when you cut it, cut it on a, on, a, on a click, you get this shoot and that takes care that you don't get any shoots up here. And here you get some, some fruit buds for next year and also here between. And that gives you the opportunity to use it a few years. But this afternoon, during uh, the uh, pruning, I don't tell you. Here you see, here you see it. Eh? You make a click, here you get your shirt, and that's the way. And uh, here the same, the click pruning. Also on the end, when a tree is at the end, you stop it. Eh? You, you, you get the trunk get through till the end, you don't cut it, but then you go till the end, and when it's three meter, three and a half meter, then you stop, and that's the end. Here you see the same, then you do the click, and that's no problem. Um, uh, I let, let me explain you this when you have a, a, a small trunk and I need 
wood what I can use. When you cut it in the top and uh, you, uh, on, a, on a click, you get extra growth up there. But compare it with a chimney. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, energy in it, and the energy what is used uh, in, in the house around, uh, it's, it's good and that's profitable. But what is over, it has to go to the top. And that's the same in, in, in a pear tree or an apple tree. You have to lose that. And then that's the way to To get here, uh, wood, what you want to have, regulate. And here, it's that extra what can be done. Here the same. You do it this way. And when, after a few years, you get it too high, you start back. And, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, you have done this a few years, here you see one, here another, here another, then you go back there, cut it here, and you start again. No problem. <coughs> when you don't tie, you get this. And then uh, when you have a flower bud at the end, you blockade it. So uh, then you get your grouse over it. We will show you this afternoon. Here the same at the end of a branch, you do exactly the same, a long click till your feather is at the end and then you make a short click later on, like here. And when you cut it back, you always do it here, not here, not there, you always do it over there. Here you see the same, in the top it's growing, and under it stays calm. And that's, that's what I need here. I want to have uh, less growth, but controlled growth. Eh? And what we were telling here on, on this food, there you get your good quality of that. Growth regulation, root pruning. Uh, very, very important is in a pear tree, in, in an apple tree too, but in a pear tree, to be in balance, your growth and your production has to be in balance. And when there's balance in the tree, you have a good production. When there's too much growth, no production, and bad quality. And start in the time when the growth is too vigorous. That can be already in the second leaf. I've seen young trees also in Quince C and Quince Adams planted in optimal conditions. And then in, uh, well, let's say in the end of the summer, uh, in, in, in Europe is that end of July, you want to stop it because they have to make that end bud. And when they don't stop, eh, when there's too much rainfall, and so you cannot control with your water gift, it's, it's possible to do a little uh, root pruning. Because you have to stop the growth and to make end buds. It's not often, but it happens. But most of the time already in the second leaf, and the balance, again, it's very, very important. But the best moments uh, to, to start with uh, 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 root pruning is, of course, in winter time. Uh, before, in a normal plantation, what is growing, do it before your pruning, because then you can see what you're doing. It's all, it's, uh, there's no plantation what is equal. And you have trees are growing much harder and less. So you do a little bit more, or you do a little bit less pruning. Um, in the summer, you can do it also uh, 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 right after dropping time. But important is that you need water. When you uh, don't have water available, 
in, in that time, don't do root pruning. Because when you do it in that time, uh, you have to make sure that the, the, the soil is wet enough, then you can do the root pruning, and a few days later you build it off, and then it's no problem. Root pruning with a straight knife, it's, it's the way what I told you in the first leaf. Just to hit a little bit, about 50, 60 centimeters from the tree on one side. But it's not good. You always better do it with a knife of 45 degrees. When you do this, you see you don't get enough roots to cut off, just a few. And uh, that doesn't work. That's better. And then you hit the bigger ones. That's still better. Real 45 degrees. Why is it better? Not only because of hitting more roots. No. Uh, when, you, when you start straight, you do this. And when you do it uh, on this way, with an angled knife, in here, in this part, you have the most uh, roots who take the available uh, fertilizers. There's everything what the tree needs is in the top. When you do it with a, with a, a, a knife uh, this way, you have to go here to get the same result, uh, to, to hit that root. So you're losing that part, and on that side you're losing also the part of where all the elements are, are where all the food is for the tree. So that's always better. Another thing with pears is that a pear always has a pin root that goes straight down. When you want to uh, regulate the growth, then it's necessary that you hit that pin root. When you cut that, your most problems are solved. Then it's every year doing a little thing. Depends on the variety. But you have to hit that, that pin. That is very, very, very important. That takes also the most water. Here you see the Boreco, and um, you can do several things, of course, like this. When old trees, when old trees are really uh, growing too hard, you can go under it on both sides and lift them. Uh, for here, I think, with the old plantations, this is maybe the most convenient. Uh, eh? then you can drive further from, from the tree and uh, it go, you can uh, uh, switch it to, to the tree so that's easier. Here you see the same. And on here you can uh, on both sides also uh, on that way but so on that machine you have it's the best machine and you have uh, many uh, ways to go. So you're saying you just Sorry? Like the depth, you adjust the depth of it with those machines or to, to increase? Also, oh, so saying back, you're saying that you increase from tree to tree and decrease depending on the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Figure. yeah. Um, yeah. Do those machines kind of go deeper and, and shallower or, is, or do you just drive in? No, you can shift it out. Oh, you just. Do you, you drive, can, do you you drive shift or you, you, you hydraulically yeah, shift it? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, on the other also, but uh, the distance is then mostly too far to go on one side, on both sides, and uh, when you see here, you cannot 
uh, when you have the side shift, let's say that, come not far enough. Mm. And with this one, you can come much further, and the, this you can banish down, so your plate is going up or your plate is going down. So that's, that's easier to work on big trees. Mm. That's in the soil. Is that, that, to get that? Is that how, how can I, I, I explain yeah, it? No, yeah. no, I mean, what, what the, yesterday we talked uh, very quickly in the orchards, actually, guys, if you root prune, this, what Anton was saying, actually, that you, before you start really root pruning, or before you prune the trees, you see some vigorous trees, and what we were talking about is, if you have, say, less vigorous trees, you can actually also lift the knife out a little bit. You know, like with this hydraulic slender, you, he said you should not just drive, you should try to make the trees uniform. And yeah, more or less, then you can lift them up a little bit where we have less vigor. But if you have, if you see water shoots like a meter, you really put them down so far as you can, basically, and hit those roots hard. That's the key, basically. And, um, but um, those machines, you can actually adjust it to the sides, but not hydraulically, basically. You can do that with driving, of course. You can go a little bit closer to your trees if you mm -hmm. want to. But those machines, you can adjust basically all the things. And now, quite a few people have those machines because they are very familiar with it. And, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's what we were talking about. You can vary the, the dip from root pruning, basically. That's what I yesterday told. When you go root pruning, you do root pruning, just look how are the trees are doing and do it before what I told you, do it before you are pruning because then you can see how hard is a tree growing. Yeah? And uh, don't start on the beginning and say, well, there's the end and uh, I'm going. Now look at it and take a little bit more and take a little bit less. That's the way of root pruning. Yeah, read the tree. Basically. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I think more. Yeah, that's right. Uh, better root pruned about uh, 50, 60 centimeters from the trunk. Uh, and then there's an angled knife I told you. And important is uh, nitrogen should be always available, and uh, water should be uh, available and checked two times per week when you did the root pruning. Uh, and of course check uh, the growth and the leaf conditions. But don't forget when you start uh, root pruning, especially the first time, it hits the tree very hard. And our experience is do never two sides in one year. Always one side in one year. That's very important. And check your water control. From the green tip, or maybe a little bit earlier, depends on the circumstances, huh? the, the weather conditions, till, till drop time. In that time, it's so important, more for pears than for apples, that there is no day with water too short. Yeah. You got always extra drop eh, when when uh, when pears has one day too short of water. Yeah, we said we're going to do it a little bit and two together. But just uh, coming back to root pruning, so quite a few people have done that, and we saw that in Cobham as well. And um, you guys have water, but make sure that you got water in the channels. You know, like in the spring, resting the first year. You know, you get sometimes. But that's all water availability. If you miss that first period, uh, till fruit drop basically on pears, it makes also that you can cause rusting with underwatering that period. And uh, that's very important for pear growers to understand that watering part, not only when you root prune, but also on the normal pears. Even tree stress, we talked about it a little bit from anything, from it could be stressing from crop load, could be uh, very heat wave and not giving enough water, that the skin things basically change. You get more resting on peas if they are stressing. And this is very important, the watering is very important till from flowering basically, from green tip like you said, till fruit set guys, fruit drop basically. Fruit drop. 
that's that's most important okay and that's in general okay especially for your skin finish uh, but controlling is that yeah, everyone does that on his own way but you have uh, good materials for it like we have the watermarks and it's very easy to to control that uh, just anyway do it two times a week uh, that you're sure that there's no bother to short. <coughs> uh, another thing is uh, when you do root pruning that it's uh, 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 too short on iron. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of fruit growers have never seen a too short on iron but when you do start with root pruning on pears for sure you get too short on iron. Uh, that's, and of course then you get two uh, yellow uh, pears, uh, uh, yellow leaves and all the problems with that. Yeah. Just for everybody, that, and probably everybody knows that, but it is uh, the anchor roots, they take up uh, coppers, iron, zinc, and as soon as you cut basically the anchor roots off, then he takes up still potassium and he still takes up nitrate, but no trace elements like iron and copper. And they are taken up by actually the anchor roots, and the fibers would take up nitrate like potassium, boron, and other elements. But iron is always the one who drop out first after root pruning. And that's where the yellow pears come in, basically, from there. And the pH of the soil. And we didn't yeah. talk about the pH of the soil, yeah. but it's important that the pH of the soil is around 5, 5.5, five 6, not higher. Because then you get problems with manganese, magnesium, uh, that's, that's also a very important thing uh, for uh, fatigation. Um, now, of course, uh, the, the water, uh, uh, we talked about it. Pollination. Pollination, uh, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, pollination in pairs is uh, very necessary. Depends, of course, on the uh, variety, but uh, uh, all, all varieties need uh, a good pollination for better quality, so it's very important. Maximum, minimum, at least two hives per hectare. Uh, I don't know how it's here, but I think the same. We are working uh, on our, our environment and uh, try to get as most as possible wild bees. Uh, uh, that's, that's also very important. Uh, all the wild bees you get for nothing, but you have to do something back, and that's the environment. Extra poles uh, uh, with uh, the machine, huh? the uh, trials with the mechanical uh, pollination. Uh, we started that, uh, let's say, five years ago, especially on commis and sweet sensation, because that are two varieties who uh, need very, very good uh, pollination. And we're talking about with that varieties at least at 15% uh, pollinators. And uh, you can do that also uh, with the machine. It's a, it's a machine built from the kiwi. Uh, 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 the kiwi, they spray on the other side and they make it straight up. And uh, we import the poles from Oregon, United States, and from South Korea, and they bring it with the machine uh, in, into the orchard. Um, depends on the variety at what time. We know for conference you can do it with 15%, 50% open bloom, that's the best time. For commis, sweet sensation, around 15, 20% open bloom, then you have to be there. And another thing is a uh, big discussion. What is the best time on the day? Of course, uh, uh, a lot of discussion, what is the best time? But uh, this year, they made a lot of countings and what when you think normally and you use your farmer brains, do it when the bees are flowering. Uh, when the bees are flowering, the flower is open for... Uh, Perception. Yeah. 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 There's a bit of pollen, guys. Uh, um, yeah, so far that I know we can't import pollen to Australia, okay? Um, we've got a few restrictions there, <laughs> okay? But maybe somebody can start 
that best known up in Australia. But it is, um, it is actually almost proven if you have good pollination on peas, you can always set them. And I think that's something lacking sometimes in our orchards that we have lots of people plant actually not enough pollinators. And also peas actually rely quite a few on wind pollination, not only on bees basically. This is very important to have. And this would be a very easy way if this worked fantastic of course, so that you actually are timing it yourself, your pollen, when you go in the orchard. But at the moment, we, um, we can't import pollen. That's a given. OK. Uh, you here you the, see, sorry. Going back to these, these wild bees, you've got little boxes in the <coughs> yeah. last slide. Solar bees, yes. We got yeah. them in Australia as well, solar bees, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, that's bees, actually. Solar bees is a bee, actually, what don't yes, sit in the hives. You got actually to drill holes in them, and actually, in, I was not aware of that either. But in Australia, you actually have solar bees. Sometimes you see them in old houses, old sheds. They make the holes and they come. They live by themselves basically. And you, in Holland, they drill little holes in them, say 12 mils. They're going to live in there and then come out. But they are very, very good as a pollinator. Yeah. And I was not aware of that, but we got them here in Australia as well, actually. And sometimes in old houses. You got them there as well. This, uh, and um, I got actually a neighbor who is, they got the sheds, they call it, and they're making at the moment sort of the hives, and we're going to see if we can get them to got a breed in there. This, uh, this is definitely worthwhile looking at that, actually. Yeah. yeah and they make, uh, it, they make it uh, of all kinds of stuff, huh? uh, just a, a piece of wood, and when you have a drill, with, uh, you make uh, like a piece of wood like this, you make 20 holes in it, that's all, and you plant it in your orchard and the wild bees are coming in. It's very easy. But to get them and to hold them, it, it's the environment and the spraying you use, if they stay. That's it. Um, the pollen are in um, just little pots and they bring it out with wind and then at the end just a little bit water to, to bring it uh, in the trees. Because when you do it uh, just along with the pollen, they go by the wind. And when you make a mix of this water and pollen, they die in half an hour. So that's impossible. And so that's the only way to, to do it. Um, so, yeah, we're using around 60 to 100 gram pollens per hectare. Now this is of course the quality we want, for, anyway, for conference. But. Now that's the goal we're going for. Yeah, around 60, 65 tons. And that's and you're a good fruit girl. Thank you very much.